I mean, why do you kiss the black stone in the Kaaba? That's to take away the sins. That's, the, that's, that's to take away the sins. Well, that's a different matter. There's a lot of, there's a lot of way you could go into it. Right? So give me your way. What, what's the way you look at it? Have you gone for Hajj? Umrah. I mean, um, yeah, I went for Umrah. Umrah. So Umrah is, uh, is, is uh, what does it exclude that Hajj has that Umrah doesn't have? There's more steps to Hajj than Umrah. Okay. Umrah, you can go in the top Hajj. You have to specifically, you have to do... You have to go, do you go, did you go around the Kaaba in the Umrah? Uh, yeah. You did? So did you try to uh, get close to the black stone? I kissed the stone. Yeah. You kissed the black stone? All right. So you kissed the black stone. You said that it takes away the sins, right? Which sins does it take away? All of them, some of them, big sins, small sins? Past sins, present sins, future sins. Past, present, future? Past, present, future. I don't know about the future, I'm not sure about that. But all, the, all the sins of the past. All the sins of the past and present. The small sins or the big sins or all of them? Everything. Everything. All right. Let's say, no, I'm just going to give you I a solution. Talk about I know, I know. I wasn't going to talk, about, gonna talk about this either. I was the, talking about the present movement. But what was the gentleman's question to you? What was he asking about? The, the he course? was bringing up the Ankh and saying that, uh, you know, in the Coptic church, they're saying that the Ankh was used by some Christians. And I was like, uh, I'm not a Coptic. I don't know what their faith is or what their... It, there was a history. It wasn't a, uh, a theological thing. It was more of a Coptic history and he brought something up. But I said, why are you, he was trying to get away from, I was asking him, give me the significance, because if you put something on top of, if I put, let's say I put a moon on top of the church instead of a cross. Do you think Christians are going to be okay with that? They put the moon. Yeah, crescent moon I put on. I say, well, Allah created it, and, we be, and, the, and the Jews believed in the, in the, in the uh, lunar calendar, because they did, and Jesus was a Jew. Therefore, I, I think it's appropriate to put the moon, a crescent moon on top of it. Or it's a decoration, whatever. Okay, I can do that. Can I do that? You could put the moon on top of the church. Yeah, why well, not? Because the, the cross symbolizes. Thank you, sir. And I, and I respect your uh, honesty so far, so far, because I know in Islam it's very hard to stay, stay honest. So now, with the same train of thought, because we venerate the cross, we put it at a place of veneration. Now, do you venerate the moon? Why do you put it on top of your mosque? It's a place of veneration, as you would say. Yeah. Well, well, it's not to do. It's not. It's not like we worship it. It doesn't have any significant power to it. That why we put it. I know it doesn't have it to you. Now, let me be honest, and I, and I like your honesty, so I'm going to be very humble well, and gentle, no and I will be very. The thing is, you don't know, and you're right, and I appreciate your honesty. Why? Because you were not told, and you are not supposed to know. That is why you don't know. Because if you knew what it meant, that would be a problem. Because the thing is that... I'll start with the moon, though. No, no, no. Because, no, no, no. I'm not starting with it. But the thing is, <laughs> I didn't, I look, look, I didn't make this story up, okay? This came from your sources. I gave him Kilby. You know who Kilby is. He's a historian. Uh, you can look him up. He wrote a book called uh, uh, Idols, uh, the Book of Idols. And he also wrote another book, which was the genealogy of Muhammad from Muhammad to Ishmael. And he's a very well-renowned, very well-respected, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, alim in Islam. And he's from the ancient days, like from the 7th century. He's not like some modern guy who just came up with 7th century, 8th century. That's when he lived. So that means that all the Muslims of that time, they respected him, they agreed with him, nobody said anything like this guy is a fake, you know, or is a liar, nothing like that, okay? And in his book, you can Google it right now, say the book of Idol Silvi, it'll come up and it'll give you the story yourself, you can read it yourself, I don't have to, anybody who's watching the video can do it. In his book, he's saying, and it's not even a long story, it's just a short, you can read it in like 10 minutes. And it says that the Lord of, okay, it says that Muhammad's grandfather, there was a divination in the Kaaba, and the Lord of Kaaba was Allah, which was the moon god. And at that time, his grandfather would do the uh, divination with the arrow, and wherever it went, it's, it's I don't understand the, most of the, uh, what that uh, uh, right was, but what it did is that because of that right, it, uh, he dedicated Muhammad's father to Hubal. 
Take ten minutes to just read it because it's not even ten minutes, five minutes. It's just uh, two paragraphs, three paragraphs. It'll be fun. So this is something that I have nothing to do with. I'm just pointing to it because that is something you say. Oh, where did you get this moon god was uh, Allah and this and that? I didn't get it, man. This came from your source. He said he's the Lord of Kaaba. You have and, the, and, the, and his symbol is the crescent moon, and you have the crescent moon on your on the mosque on the minaret in Kaaba. Okay, I'm not gonna say. It. In Kaaba, oh, it's not on Kaaba. It's not on top of Kaaba. Yes, it's on top of the mosque at Kaaba. That's what it is, and that makes it. And it's not even just that mosque. It's all over the world, and it's not from uh, Ottoman. That is false. So when you were saying to him, you said it doesn't have any significant power. All right. So the, the, when the guy, so you, the, the gentleman you was talking yeah, to, yeah. he said it doesn't. He's trying to say to you, like, what, why are you trying to say that? Because. Because that guy from the 7th century said, that's the, that's the thing that... That guy, you, you, you're, you're, you're trying to say that this guy is some kind of like an idiot. He's not. Okay, because, because there's another book, if you read about him, there's another book he wrote, and this book was the genealogy of Muhammad connecting him to Ishmael. 
And that book is well respected by all Muslims and everything. None of the Muslims written, of his time, written by him, written by him. None of the Muslims of that time or ever after ever questioned his authenticity or called him a liar or anything at all. Nothing. If you can find it, I'm here every week. Come and say I was lying. This guy was a liar. You made this stuff up. I'll, I'll be happy to look into it. There is nothing like that. So this guy is solid. There's nothing, to, uh, not, none of agenda. Because if you just read what he said, he was trying to show the polytheism of the three Arabian uh, you know, religions. And, and he's writing, and if you read his book, uh, there's a few paragraphs, it talks about the, uh, the, the tribe of Quraysh. He's saying this was the tribe of Quraysh, and they did this and this and this, and this was the ritual. And then he was dedicated to uh, Uzza or uh, Al Manat, one of the daughters. And they were the daughters of Allah. Did I make this up? No, this was Allah. Uh, sorry, Hubal. Okay, sorry. <laughs> because because there is another mention of daughters of Allah somewhere else, right? Yeah, there is. Okay, never mind. So, anyways, there were the daughters of Hubal. When you said about the cross, what was what was the mention about the cross? Why you guys wear the cross? Well, I mean, that's a that that that. That's not even a question because we wear the cross because it's mentioned in the Bible. Wear your cross. It says, pick up your cross and uh, follow me. So there's, uh, there's nothing. Do you believe that it holds any power when you hold it? Like no. When you wear it? no, no, nothing. No, listen. It has power in, in its significance. Okay? It itself doesn't have power. No, no, no. Look, look. Symbols don't have power, they have significance. Swastika in itself doesn't have the power of the Nazi party, but it has its symbolism. Right? So the moon, crescent moon, in itself doesn't have the power, but it represents the power of Kubal. Okay? So when you worship an idol, you don't worship because that idol in itself has power. No. The power behind what it's representing is what you're worshiping. So now, I'll go one step further, and this is the last point, because I think I've been going on for a long time about it. I just want to finish this on this. Muslims don't know what the significance of the moon on the mosque is. And I have asked very learned Muslim, Naz, you know Naz, he's a very smart Muslim uh, preacher. Nazim, yeah, we call him Naz. He's yeah, the big man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy, yeah, he's over there. So I asked him, and he said, oh, it's from the Ottoman, okay, which is uh, completely the Ottoman. He said, I don't know, it's probably from the Ottoman. Now, what I'm saying is 99.9% .9 of the Muslims don't know anything about the significance of that. In idol worship, it doesn't matter if you know what the significance is. As long as you bow down to it, that's all it matters. Because it's false worship anyways. It's not a real God anyway. Just by bowing down to it and putting it on a, on a venerated place, that's a, because... But can I put stuff there? There's two different things. Putting stuff on top of it, right? Like I say, it doesn't have and any worshiping power. worshiping it is different thing. It doesn't have any power. It has some yeah. significance. Bow it down to it. We don't. We pray in the mosque. Right? Okay, you pray in the street. And, I, the and I gave you that point already without you making it. I said Muslims do not think that they're worshiping the moon or they're intending to or anything like that. Because in the Quran it says, don't worship the moon and the sun, right? Okay, that's right. But what you, I was trying to, what you missed the point was that in paganism, or in the Satanism, let's say, I would go as far as saying Satanism, Satan doesn't care whether you know the meaning of his symbol or not, as long as you worship his symbol. That's all. And you're not worshipping because you don't know you're worshipping, but you have it on top of your mind. That's all he cares about because it's a symbol. 